Now, hi everyone, and welcome back to our Tales of Jesus, and particularly the tale of the prodigal son. A story in Luke 15, verse 11 onwards, of two boys and their father. We saw last time how there is a picture of the father as a loving, caring, sacrificial father who does not do what he can do, which is to punish the children. But let's look again at what the children were doing, these two sons. We look very carefully at the story, and it is worth looking at every word, because every word matters. Jesus tells stories where there's an economy of um, words, and Luke makes it so that everything matters. He says, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided the property between them. I don't know what you think of inheritance. I don't know if you have inherited and you're grateful to your father. I know I am. I'm an only son and I inherited from my father, to my mother who already died, the wealth he had. And although in today's terms it wasn't huge, it was sufficient. And I thank God for that as well, because I'd rather sufficient than be too great or too little. My father then gave me an inheritance, and before he died, I already had a fair idea of what that would be. We talked about it a bit, not a lot, but enough. I knew that, um, apart from a, a little bit to my son, I was the sole beneficiary of his will. I would never have dreamt of asking him for everything. I might, as a Westerner, have said, Dad, can you help me? I'm in financial trouble. And he would have done, I know. Can I have a bit of my inheritance? It wouldn't perhaps have shocked him or us too much. But we have to say back then, to ask for the inheritance was a shocking, shocking thing. Because, as I mentioned last time, the younger son was saying, Dad, I wish you were dead. It was shocking not only to the father, but to everyone round about, as we'll see in a moment. So the younger son says what he should never do. He rebels, he disgraces, he is not a good son. He is not, if you like, acting as he should in his father's image. But we come to a second point in the story that's not so obvious. There is a second son, an older son, an older brother. Unlike me, an only, only son, um, I didn't, wouldn't have had that. But what should an older brother do in this case? The father would rightly expect him to go to his younger, ne'er-do-well brother and say, you can't do this. This isn't right. Or indeed, he should try and mediate between the father and the son, saying, Dad, I, I know this isn't good, but I'll try and work on it. Let's try and sort this out before this becomes a scandal in the community. But none of the, the above. The older son doesn't ask, but he, it, we hear, accepts his share of the property as well. The father divides it between them. The older son should say, no, dad, under no circumstances will I take my portion. This division of property was probably under the kind of terms where the father can stay in the property as long as he lives. Um, but the younger son even gets the right to sell off his property. And we read in the story, not long after that, the younger son got together all he had. I don't even ever try to sell property. Now and then, it takes a long time. It's not that quick. If you want to sell quickly, you have to sell at a cut price. And this is what the younger son does. He knows full well that he's in disgrace, not only with his father, but with the whole community. And so he just sells it off and does a runner. It is not simply that he is going on a, a, a gap year or something with a bit of money given by his father. He has disgraced himself and This then is the scenario. 
and God, Father, Father in the story, loved him so much, he let him do it. He did not punish him, he did not refuse him either. He let him have his wealth. And so to us, what does God do to us when we rebel? With all the good things he's given us, perhaps wealth, health, whatever, talents. What does he do when we rebel and use them against him and against his purposes? Well, he doesn't usually punish us. There may be a time when that will happen. But he says, no, you are my child. But you also have free will. I have given you the opportunity to respond in love. It is up to you. The question, have we rebelled in the past? Are you rebelling now in some way, going against what God wants of you? This is what both the younger son and the older son in different ways were doing. For us, as his followers, that should not be the case. Let us look in our hearts and see to what extent we rebel today. The story will unfold as to how the two sons respond in this situation.